So here's the kitchen where we're going to be doing the work here. And this is where an electrical panel used to be here. And we've taken the wires out of this outlet here. And you can see where a line has been started here. That's going to be the right side of the doorway opening. And it's going to come all the way up to here. Somewhere up a little higher there, we have a little pencil mark there. And we're going to go over here and then come back down on this side where you can see there's that pencil mark there. So we're going to be demoing all of this. And we've already determined that this is not a load-bearing wall because there are no joists that end and rest right on top of this. There are some that go straight across all the way to the front of the house, but that load is being bared by the exterior cement walls on the front of the house. And you turn around here, and this is the other cement wall, so oh, you can barely see up there, there's one of the floor joists there. Uh, uh, from the, These are from the roof, the roof trusses. So we're not worried about that. We do not have a load-bearing wall. And what we're going to essentially build here is our jack stud and king stud on either side and then a header across the top. Now here we are on the other side of the wall here in the living room. And you can see we have the outline marked here for where the kitchen entrance is going to be. And we've already started a little bit of uh, sawing through here. We're probably going to use an angle grinder here to cut through this. This is plaster and it's about an inch thick. So let's get busy. Here's the completed doorway opening now and we're just playing around with some of the pieces of wood. So we're kind of playing around here dry fitting a king stud right here which runs at the top goes all the way down and you have a jack stud that's going to go right here and we're going to have to cut this jack stud down to meet the top level of this because a beam will go across here a header beam right. We can use a 2x4, we can use a 2x6. It's not load bearing, but usually if it's load bearing, I prefer to rotate a couple of 2x6s uh, so that it'll be 6 inches tall, but stacked too thick, two boards thick, uh, to give you really good strength. But this is not a load bearing wall, so we don't have to worry about that there. And we're hoping to be able to just reuse these two cripples here. Now as we kind of step back a little bit and check out the whole wall here, I wanted to point out something very important to remember is that if we were going to do a load bearing uh, wall here, we would have had to put up braces to hold the ceiling up there and everything before we even thought about cutting up this hole. For our squareness, I wonder.
Okay, so let's recap here what we've done. We're looking at the finished product here. And if you remember, we started off this morning with just a full drywall, full wall, studded wall. And what we did here to make this doorway was we took where these two studs are right here. And that these used to go all the way down to the floor, right? So we removed these two studs, leaving just these two cripples up here. We took those two studs and put them right here on either side of the opening here, of our framed opening, and those become our jack studs. We cut them down, and we make them uh, the height of our door. And remember, this is just going to be an opening. There's not going to be a hanging door here. But even so, just to be a um, standard here, we did go ahead and mount this king stud here. We recovered this wood from another room and we did the king stud on this other side here too. It's always good practice to do a king stud and a jack stud. And the reason is, is you know, what if somebody later on wants to come in and add a door? Well, you wanna have this capability here by having this king stud, which adds a lot more stability. And you can even add a few brace pieces too, if you want. Like we added a couple over here on this side, there's one here, and we've got another one right over here too. So then what we do is we, after we have the jack studs in place, you, you put your two header pieces here and this doesn't have to be anything fancy because there's no load. This is not a loaded wall. Okay, so as we look at the upper section of this door here and all the support, uh, normally I like to use a two by six as the header. So normally, especially if you're doing a lobe, we will take two two by sixes and sandwich them together and stick them vertically going up like that. That's how we normally do it. And it gives a lot more strength there. Okay, and so the way all of this works then is if this was a load bearing wall, the load would come down the two cripples and it would go across these headers and down the jack stud here all the way down to the floor okay. so either way there is still going to be some downward force here from all the drywall and everything here and we didn't make any changes to the top plate or the the upper crown plate there and that upper crown plate serves a couple of purposes because if you look over in the corner here you can see they use the upper plate there to overlap over the adjacent wall next to it so if I pan out just a little bit to show you the adjacent wall see how they kind of go over each other like almost like a brick pattern I don't know why the builder didn't carry this upper crown plate here all, all the way into the into the corner there but that's the way it is and so we just want you to make sure you know that if this had been a load bearing wall you would have had to set up another second temporary studded wall going all the way across here kind of to brace the ceiling and everything so that when you remove weight here you're not you're not uh, just letting everything sag down okay so you always want to make sure too that your both your corners are square because if you ever hang a door in there it's got to be absolutely perfectly square all right so here's how we make sure that we're completely vertical we put our six foot level up to it and as you can see we're pretty much right smack dab in the middle there okay and then you also want to make sure that your your cross beams here your, your headers are uh, completely perpendicular to your side pieces and we do that with a carpenter square so you can see if i put this up here it's not wiggling it's not moving it's like absolutely perfectly perfectly perpendicular and so we spend a lot of time making sure that this is the case here sometimes you have to put in these little braces like you see here if you have wood that's slightly warped and you want to kind of push it in a little bit because the idea is to make sure that when you put your six foot level over here that you don't see any cracks going down and it stays nice and perfectly flat against your wood all the way down and here you're looking at my 30 degree pass load nails these are three and a quarter inches long and you need to check with your uh, building department at your your municipality because if you're going to get inspected they may be telling you how big they want the, the nails to be and normally they want to see three three and a quarter inch 
nails used and so I stick these in my gun and we just fire them in you know poof poof you just kind of go down the wall there with those so you want to make sure you're using uh, you know approved fasteners for your area and so that's it that's our perfect door that's how you put a doorway into a non load bearing wall and at the sake of sounding repetitive I just want to give you a warning that if your load if your wall is a load bearing wall you need to make sure that you're putting up bracing along that ceiling there before you even start cutting into the old wall and here's the view from the living room side